In this video, you are going to learn how to configure the SNET rule for internet accessing. The SNET is stand for Source Network Address Translation. Look at this topology. Most of the users are deploying private IP address in their internet. So, if an internal user is trying to access a public server in the internet, the source IP address of the original packet needs to be translated from the private IP address to a public one, so that um, the packet could be translated in the internet. And there are two different modes, IP address translation and port address translation, aka PAT. In IP address translation, only the IP address would be translated from the private one to public one. In port address translation, not only the IP address would be translated, but also the port number would be translated, so that the system could identify different sessions by the port number. Now, let's take a look at the configurations in Houston Firewall. Before creating the SNET rule, we need to create address book. In object, address entry, click new. First, the address book for our LAN. In this example, we will use 192.168.1.0/24, and then create a address book for our public IP addresses. Assuming that we have two public IP addresses. Then go to policy, net, snet, click new. The first part is a filtering condition. Usually, uh, the packet from the LAN to one need to be translated. So the source IP address would be LAN, and the destination IP address would be any because there are lots of public IP addresses in the internet. And the most important filtering condition is the egress here. Usually it will be the egress interface and then the one interface. And uh, the service could be any because there's no need to filter traffic here. And then we have three different actions. Translate to egress IFIP, translate to specified IP and no NAT. The egress IFIP means the IP address of the egress interface. In this example, it would be the IP address of the interface ethernet 0 slash 8. The limitation here is that only one public IP address could be used because there's only one public IP address for the interface. So if you have more than one public IP address, you would need to choose the second action, translate to a specified IP. We have two public IP addresses here, and we have already created the address book for them. So check the address book. And then you can see we have three different modes. Static, dynamic IP, and dynamic port. Let's take a look at the difference. The static mode is uh, IP translation. The static here means the mapping relationship is static. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. So the size of the original source IP address book would be the same as the translated source IP address book. The second mode is dynamic IP. It is also an IP address translation. The dynamic here means the mapping relationship is dynamic. So the size of the original source IP address could be different with the translated source IP address book. But the concurrent user is limited by the number of the public IP addresses. 
The last mode is dynamic port. It's a port address translation, which means you could use only a few public IP addresses to share with lots of users in the same time. So this is the most useful one. Back to Hillstone device. For the mode, you just need to check the last one in most of the user case. And then click OK. Thank you for watching. Please visit kb.hillstonenet.com for more details in the document library.